little harder to see. All right, so our next speaker is definitely playful. She's also mischievous, curious, a little crass, very cool, very smart. She's breaking taboos and barriers with her eponymous, uh, very successful TV show on Comedy Central, and she has a new book coming out in April called The Bedwetter, Stories of Courage, Redemption, and P. Prepare for a various, very, very serious 18 minutes with Sarah Silverman. Thank you, Sarah. I am 39 years old, and I still wake up every morning so excited that I don't have to go to school. It's the little things. You have to appreciate the little things. And uh, one of those little things is, oh, fuck, communication. <laughs> honest communication. It feels good to be honest. I went home recently to visit my mother, and we had some really nice mother-daughter time together. And. Uh, we were in the bathroom, she was brushing her hair, and I was waiting for the shower to get warm, and we were just talking, and I turned to get into the shower once it warmed up, and she said, she looked at my bottom, and she said, Sarah, what is that? And I turned around and looked in the mirror, and on my ass was a bruise, the exact <laughs> shape of a hand. And I said, I'm sleeping with a man that spanks me. <laughs> well, does it hurt? You know what, Mom? I'm usually so high. Uh, probably. But my mother and I have always had a very special connection. I remember. When I was very little, I would sh take showers with my mom. When I was about three, we would shower together, and uh, she would, uh, her water source was the shower head. That's from, from, from what she would cleanse herself. Then that water would then cascade down her and kind of pike off of her, um, you know, it was the 70s, you know, I, and uh, that's from, from what I would clean myself. I don't know why, but it was such a happy memory. It was like, like I had my very own curly shower or something. And I remember thinking, you need water to start soap, but you also need water to end soap. I was very deep. I was very, very deep. Um, but being honest is something that I enjoy very much um, with my Nana as well, who, she's dead, but um, when she was alive, I would go to her nursing home and sing for her and all of her friends, and um, well, I mean, they weren't her friends, but they were her, you know, partners in uh, about to being deadness. <laughs> and I would sing them this song I wrote just for them. Can you blow your own nose? Can you tie your own shoe? If you had Velcro ones, would you even know what to do? When you make a duty, is it in your pants? Or trousers, as they said in the day? Are you mad because your grandson is gay? Is it a bummer that your pubes are all gray? When you clear your throat, is it really disgusting? Does it go on for hours and miles? You're gonna die soon, you're gonna die soon. It's not cold in here, you're just dying. You're gonna die soon, you're gonna die soon. You in the back, you are dying soon. 
You're gonna die soon, you're gonna die soon. We're all gonna die, but not as soon as you guys. You're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're dying. Thank you. I grew up in Bedford, New Hampshire, which is a, really? <laughs> it's a very small town, um, and it has almost no Jews, and when I grew up, it had no Jews. And I wasn't raised with any religion at all, so it wouldn't matter, and it didn't matter, but the only reason, the only way that I really knew I was Jewish at all was because nobody around me was, and they saw me that way, so it became the way I defined myself. And I remember in third grade, uh, boarding the, the school bus, and Matt Italia threw pennies at my feet and said, you know, pick it up, you like pennies. And I was like, I do? Okay, and um, you know, I look back on it, it certainly, wasn't a race crime, it was a young boy trying to get it, his head around something that he had never seen before. And uh, even then, I understood that, because again, I was very, very deep, um, and also 39 cents richer. <laughs> I was annoyed uh, as a kid, because around Christmas time, a lot of the kids would blame me uh, for my people killing Jesus, and... Um, <laughs> I thought it was hilarious too, but no. Um, it was so annoying because I thought to myself, like, geez, it's not like we killed baby Jesus. I mean, the guy had a decent run for 33 years. Give me a break. <laughs> and by the way, you're welcome. Uh, because otherwise, he would not have been famous. Think about it, Marilyn, Janis Joplin, Anne Frank. They need to die early to get famous. Could you imagine if Anne Frank was still alive? She'd be like, you know, the person on the, like, not on the dais, but like at the roast that they tell the comics she'll be there, you can make fun of her, she'll be in the crowd. It's a little bit of an inside joke, but you know what I mean, podcasts. <sighs> I thought that would go somewhere. I just said, I'll wing it with that thing. Here's a fun fact. Uh, there are Jews in Ethiopia. They're called Ethiopian Jews. <laughs> they were, uh, I'm paraphrasing, because I don't know. I'm, I don't know this stuff so well, but my sister is a rabbi, and she's, like, smart, and I vaguely remember her saying, they were, like, separated from all other Jews for 2,000 years, and when they finally discovered them, they they saw that they still practiced uh, Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah, and as well, they were rather pushy and uh, fairly cheap. <laughs> so it's pretty amazing. I understand. I understand uh, why we need religion, because at the very at its very core, it's a survival skill. It's a way to um, it's a way to cope. It's a way to understand the big questions, the, the things, uh, you know, the universal questions that are just unanswerable. A lot of people can't just go like, wow, I'm existing in a place with a lot of totally unanswerable questions. They need to know. So it's like a way to compartmentalize. It's a way to deal with it. I mean, think about, we were a speck. That's totally fucked up. I mean, like, you know, we were once like, I exploded up out of my dad's balls. That's a lot. I, sh I mean, swimming in semen. Drowning in semen. I shot out of my father's penis hole. It's just amazing to think I was ever that thin. <laughs> and
Everybody experiences insecurity in different ways. You know, um, it's either a, a meekness or a chip on your shoulder. You feel like people are disrespecting you at the drop of a hat, you know, or maybe you need to like name drop or brag a lot. You haven't realized yet that that's not going to buy you any extra love. Uh, insecurity can humble us, you know. I remember when I first moved to New York City, I was walking down the street and uh, like, honestly, construction workers, I know it sounds sad, whistled at me and I turned around like, ugh, and the guy goes, not you. <laughs> Insecurity <laughs> can protect us, really. I mean, how many people do you know that really are not seeing themselves the way other people see them. It's, it's a, again, like a survival skill, you know. Um, you get the feeling that some people, if they were one or two degrees more onto themselves, they'd kill themselves, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Take like a, let's say a woman, uh, let's say when she was 19, she was smoking hot. Now she's a little bit older. Let's make her like uh, 39. <laughs> not as hot. She's not as hot. But she doesn't realize it because she's only looked out her own eyes. OK, this is my impression of this woman. 19, smoking hot. Now she's 39, not as hot. <clears throat> it's so weird. When I was like 19, there were so many of official pussy inspectors. Like everywhere you looked, there was an official pussy inspector. <laughs> you never see them anymore. <laughs> How crazy is that? You know, I probably, computers. <laughs> Spend so much time wondering if we could, we don't think if we should. That's a quote from a movie. Doesn't really fit. How about when people go like, yeah, whatever. They do that like jerking off thing, like, yeah, whatever. What are they saying? They're saying, I don't care, right? Yeah, whatever. I don't care. But if you really didn't care, you probably just, you wouldn't do anything at all, right? <laughs> you wouldn't need to like desperately show people that you don't care. That's insecurity. Yeah, whatever. Whatever, just please don't think I care. And in exchange, feel free to know my way that I masturbate. <laughs> I'll die if you think I care. Please don't think I care. I will happily trade you thinking I care for you now knowing my way that I make myself come. <laughs> a lot of women, ugh, that's all right. Everybody's sick, sorry. A lot of women uh, will misbehave, and then they just say that they're a diva, and uh, they think that just makes everything okay. I'm a diva. I can cut in line. I'm a diva. I can be selfish and thoughtless. I'm a diva. Mm, I'm pretty sure you're a cunt. We live in a world of excess, and we have to curb that if we want to keep on living. Um, population in the world doubles every 40 years, I think. <laughs> I may have made that up, but it's something like that. <laughs> I read it on a blog, but it's something like that, right? 
That's, inc that's crazy. And I understand people want to have babies. They want to have the experience of being pregnant. They want to have a little version of themselves that they can like do it right this time or whatever. But there are so many kids. It's hard to think that, and I, when my friends are pregnant, I'm so excited, but it is odd to think how, you, how it's not total vanity to, to give birth when there are so many children out there uh, to adopt. And I'm gonna, uh, I know that one day I would like to adopt. Um, I'm gonna take it a step further. I am going to adopt a mentally challenged child. Um, that's threefold, thank you. It's harder for them to get adopted. Uh, I have two oodles of love to give. And three, I just really enjoy um, the company of the mentally challenged. There is one caveat I realized in my plan, and that is they don't leave the nest at 18. You die, God willing, of old age at 80, and you are worried about who's going to take care of your 60-year-old retarded child. That's where I came up with this brilliant solution. Um, I am going to adopt a, a retarded child who's terminally ill. <laughs> I know. Now you're thinking, who looks to adopt a retarded child who's terminally ill? An amazing person. I don't remember any 9-11 firefighters adopting terminally ill retarded children. That's all I'm saying. Um, of course, there's the inevitable awkwardness uh, during the adoption process. The questions you have to ask, you know, are you sure there is absolutely no cures on the horizon? <laughs> Ted is fancy. People come here, they always have visual aids, uh, they talk about heady stuff like perspective. And so I'm going to do that for a second. Okay. A lot of people look at this, they see a very big number. <laughs> a lot of people look at this and they see a relatively, uh, a relatively low number. I look at this, oh fuck, um, I see a butt pooping. A lot of you did too, I think, early on. I'll go one further. Sometimes I look at this, I see boobs pooping. Very abstract, <laughs> very, very abstract. Uh, I'm gonna end with a song. We're gonna need some Purell over here. This is a song, because uh, everybody deserves a song, for uh, the porn stars in the audience today. Um, and you're all stars. <laughs> There's a hole in your butt where the duty comes out. There's a hole in your butt where the penises go in. Your vagina has so many penises in it that you might as well talk about the times there are none in it. Cause those are the times that are more unique. There's a dream in your head that will never come true. There's a stickiness all over and it didn't come from you. You wish your dad had been there, but more often times he was not you. Can't put your arms around a dirty gangbang cum shot, but that's all you get. That's all you get. Do you ever take drugs so that you can have sex without crying? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever take drugs so that you can have sex without crying? Yeah, yeah. There's a hole in your heart where the sorrow pours out. There's a hole in your heart where ambivalence sets in. Do, 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 do. All the penises in the country. All the penises in the world. 
all the penises in the galaxy. <laughs> Won't fill your heart hole. Fucked up a little, but thank you. She ran away. <laughs> I am very rarely at a loss for words. <laughs> you know, Robert, I was just thinking this. Can you imagine the conversations we're going to be having about? Well, what do you think about the duty? Can we can we use that word on on the internet? Well, I'll bring her out for applause. Sarah, come back for, so they can applaud you. But we don't have time for an encore, I'm sorry. They need to applaud you. They need to applaud you a little more. <laughs> this can't be right. <laughs> If we had time, I, if we had time, I'd ask you for an encore, although it would also terrify me, but instead I will just thank you. Oh, you are a total, you. total delight. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I didn't know I was... They demanded you back. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> That's all. all right. Just had to see your